Good evening, everyone, and welcome to These Days. I'm your host, Barb Kaidel. I'm very happy to be here again with you on Thursdays from 7.30 to 8 p.m. live and Fridays from 11.30 to noon um, in the mid-morning. And we hope that you tune into our program frequently because we have wonderful guests, one of which has been with us before and is going to be a frequent visitor, Cindy Miller. Hi, Welcome, Barb. Cindy. Nice to see you nice again. To see you. I'm so glad you're here. Glad to be here. Always fun. Oh, thank you. And uh, it's our pleasure to, to be with you tonight, Cindy. And we're going to talk a little bit about Cindy. She's going to, I like to call her the sacred messenger. And uh, Cindy, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you do? And maybe some of the people would be interested in uh, hearing about that. Sure. Um, I lead a monthly group called the Journey Group Within. And it's every month we get together and I, I intuit information for the group. We have different speakers that come in and discuss things. And I also oh. work with clients um, as far as I'm going to be seeing someone tomorrow and We'll do a session with them to see what, when I say I'm very God-based, so I'll hear what God has to say. I'll just pray and hear what God has to say for that person's life. And I'm writing a book, and it's coming out this spring. Yay. And it, what is the name? It, um, I can't give that out yet. Okay. But it's an, but it's an in-depth um, journal book, and um, I'm very, very excited to have that be coming out. And yes. I've been doing a lot of poetry. So... I just like to share as much as I can inspirational about oh. life, path, purpose, that kind of thing. Oh, that's wonderful. And so we'll be looking forward to hearing about the book and what we can do to acquire it. Great. And in the meantime, tonight's topic is there are no mistakes. And I like that very much because I think we all seem to tend to think we make mistakes. But are they really mistakes or choices? And how can you say there are no mistakes? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the topic of mistakes, as we were just saying. And in my opinion, uh, I would like to agree with this topic that there are no mistakes. But we often use that word frequently uh, in, our, in our conversation, in our daily language. Oh, I made a mistake. Whatever. It could be the simplest little thing or not. But in the meantime, uh, Cindy... How can you say there are no mistakes? What I mean by there are no mistakes, there's a woman that has passed, I really loved her, Betty, and she shared with me, Cindy, one time, she goes, you know, there are no mistakes, there's just learning opportunities. Oh, I like and that. And that quote has stuck oh. with me for such a long time. I'll never forget that quote that was given to me yeah. by her. And I kind of look at that like, it's true. We are here to learn. We're here to learn something all the time. We never hopefully stop learning. Exactly. So if we look at something that we've chosen to do as a learning opportunity, no matter what the outcome is, I think it's so important to treat, treat um, st stuff that way because is, is the sound okay? I know we're having a little bit of a sound, is sound issue here. Is the sound all right there? Okay, good. Um, sorry about that. So I think it's really important for us to be able to make decisions and not be afraid to make them and not be so hung up with the outcome because a lot of times outcomes do change and they're not the way we expected things exactly. to end up. But it's okay because through that experience we are taught and we learn so many different things. Yeah, so that's the, the positive way of looking at it. It's a learning experience. And uh, if we choose, uh, you know, one way or the other, it's still a, a method of growing, and we can learn from that. So what is a better way for us to make a choice? As, as far as making a choice with anything, I think people, you know, sometimes they have to say, does it feel right for me? Is, it, is this the right thing that I should be doing? And, I mean, I think it's, it's good for me. For me, I pray a lot, and I'll say, you know, God, is this what you want me doing? And a lot of times God will say, sure, Cindy, go ahead and do this. And I'll be nervous about doing it, or I might look, lack the confidence, yeah, right. or I might say, are you sure? Like, you sure I, I'm going to be able to handle this? But with that inner knowing, I'll just move forward anyway and say, okay, I'm going to step, take a step forward. And I call them small steps of success. If we take these little steps, it's going to ultimately lead us to the bigger 
plan anyway. Right, right. So it, it's just the fact of just attempting to do something. And you may say, you know, Cindy, I don't pray and I don't hear from God, but I think you have your own inner knowing or, oh, yeah. or trusting, you know, does this feel right? Is this something I should do? But I also think we have this little voice that plays in our head mm. that can be very self-defeating right. where we could think like, I don't know if I can pull this off. I don't know if I have what right. it takes. I don't know if I know enough. And I think we have to just kind of like turn down the volume of that voice and, and, and turn up the voice saying, maybe this is possible. I don't have to know everything. Maybe I could give this a try. Exactly, and I like that so much. Does, uh, but I'm, I'm thinking of a word here now that maybe is a, a word that is self-defeating for us attachment yeah so I think about you know some people get stuck they can't move forward because they're attached to something or someone or some idea or some experience yeah. and in that in doing so uh, we, we we make ourselves stuck right yeah. so is attachment the same as ego or is attachment wanting to keep something there and not move forward because you know what it is you know what it is, whether it's good or not. Sometimes people stay stuck in that, and well, we I, hear yeah, about it all the time. I think that's really interesting. You know, attachment can be also we've expected a certain outcome from that situation. So we can be very stuck on, well, that didn't manifest the way that I thought it was going to, so I'm going to keep trying yeah. and attempting to do it. And ego, to me, has always been said as edging God out. And it's where we think we know so much and where we don't humble ourselves enough to learn or to be open or to look at suggestions or a new way of thinking and understanding something that we're doing. I mean, people, oh, there's so many helpful people around you that can guide you and, you know, help you along with your choices. So, I don't know, attachment is, is not a good thing, I don't think. No, but I think a lot of people uh, out of fear, yeah. the underlying root, which may not be, in, which may be in the subconscious, but we don't know it, yeah. is what, I think fear is the underlying, underlying root of all people's uh, behaviors yeah. sometime, don't you? Yeah. It's just there, you know, uh, maybe, that's not, maybe that's a strong word, but I think that lots of times we're afraid to move forward. But when we do, and we take that little step, we're giving ourselves the confidence we need even if it's just a small breakthrough, don't you think? Yeah. They often say that the word fear also means that you feel a lack of love. And when yeah. you feel a lack of love, you can feel that you're not appreciated, you're not valued, you're not supported. And for me, you know, it has always been taught to me, and I know that God loves each one of us. And so that if you feel you have no one in your life, at least you have God in your life yeah. and, you know, allow those others to come through. So I think it's really important for us to get over our fear and with anything, you know, unless there's a really legitimate reason why you should be afraid because fear can be so immobilizing and just leave right. you just like st stuck. 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 And, and so, uh, yeah, that's what I feel uh, in terms of this conversation. Uh, many people are going through that. You know, yeah. we're all on this journey, uh, you know, which is a word everybody tosses around. You're on your journey, but we yeah. are. Yeah. So along this roadway here, um, when we talk about mistakes, how are we able to undo a mistake if you, if you call it a mistake? I don't think you can undo a mistake, and I think sometimes we live too much in the past versus the oh, present yes. moment. Oh. I think that we can ref we should we can reflect and learn from our past but it's not to stay stuck in the past it's to say take that knowledge that you obtained from the past and move it forward to present moment on how you can handle things differently how you can react differently yes. how you can feel differently all of those you know dynamics go in into you know you and really, exactly. the mistake is really being too hard on yourself for things that you want to undo. Like you could say, you know, I wish I did this, I should have done that, I could have done that. And I think that we beat ourselves up oh. way too much as far as being our own worst critic. Yeah. And you know, it, it, you can't undo it. You can't undo it, but you can, you know, tomorrow is a new beginning. Yes. And today is a present moment. 
and to relish the present moment. Exactly, and I think our minds are either not in the present moment, they're either in the past or in the future, yeah. trying to figure out what they're doing and forgetting about right this minute. Yeah. And you know, I try to remind myself of that and I think we all do, and sometimes we don't. Yeah, we that, don't live that, it. That is so important, Barbara, that you're sharing that because I think that is so, so true, that we can just take so much time reflecting on the past oh. And then we're so afraid of what tomorrow's going to hold sometimes right. that the moment of just enjoying the present moment of being alive exactly. escapes us. I it's know. just like this illusion that just like, whoop, like I, I, I don't know if we go into zombie land or what, right. that we, we, yeah. we forget that. I know, I, I, I agree. So talking about, uh, as we're going on, um, what are the obstacles from repeating the same mistake. What, how can we avoid it? So if we're stuck, we're not moving forward, but we're actually, so we're not, there's nothing, is there something to avoid? Or are we just stuck? And if we're moving forward, how do we avoid repeating things that aren't good for us? Well, I think we could look at sometimes too, some of the patterns that we set up for ourselves yeah. um, in a day like, Am I doing the same thing the same way, the yeah. same, you know, versus saying, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be doing this the same way. Maybe I need to be looking over here than, than over here. And I think very often things are presented to us again and again. Mm. And I really think the universe, and I call the universe, God is mm -hmm. waiting for us to say, no, no, been there, done that, no, no, no. Now something new will be presented and come my way. And I think we're, we're often tested, you know, through our day and, and our life path yeah. and purpose mm -hmm. is saying like, nope, you know what, I'm going to let that slide and I think I'm going to head over this way. Or often, if it didn't turn out the way you wanted to, maybe you were being groomed and prepped for the next go round. So that you could say, you know, that time was kind of a bumpy, rocky road. But the next go round, maybe it's much smoother and calmer and easier. Yeah, that would be nice. So I think, you know, we, we learn through all, it's just such a learning curve that we go through all the time um, in choices and in the way we're living our life. Which is re really quite exciting. Yeah. Even in, in the lowest ebb of a day or a moment or something that's happened to you. Suppose now, as I'm talking about that, that um, something occurs in your life which was unexpected and maybe happened to a loved one or maybe to yourself. Uh, how do you, uh, is that called a mistake or how do you deal with that? Is that taking away from our topic because something happens to you that is totally not in your realm, it isn't a mistake or it isn't a choice, it isn't a decision, it just happens. Boom, and you're faced with it. It could be a crisis. Right. Is that still along the topic we're talking about? Well, and how you make a choice on that? Well, you, through anything that happens to you, through any crisis, you're making decisions through that crisis. Right. And I think often we cannot be as clear during a crisis because right. our emotional state starts flowing and all the other kind of stuff. But I think if we learn to take, have support around us, mm -hmm. you know, people that we can sound off of and pray about it and meditate about it and, you know, go to others about it and see what kind of advice are they giving you with this situation or, you know, with this, this crisis? I mean, God speaks through others. And I mean, and it could be like, you right. know what? I keep hearing this. I keep hearing this about this crisis that I'm right. in. So maybe that information that's being given to me is something that I could do to shift this crisis around. So we're even in that point, in, even in that mode with people coming in and out or, you know, messages that you're getting or pre being presented with, we're still in that learning lesson mode. Always in the learning always, lesson mode. Always, and always. Always. It think never stops. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. And I, I, I want our audience to know that life is a learning experience that, you know, just because you re reach a certain age or you think you're going to retire or maybe you're going to move here or do something, that's not going to change what your learning experiences are. 
we should be exploring more learning experiences, right? right? And so when we make these choices then, um, how do we know if it isn't a mistake when we make a decision? Suppose you want to sell your house and move to another state. And then you get there and you decide, oh, gee, I've sold my house. I don't have, you know, I've got this money. Now I'm going to buy this condo or this other house. I, I think this is a better environment for me. And then you get there and after six or eight months, you wish you didn't do it. You don't have the place to go back to it and you're over there. What do you call that? And well, how do you reconcile with one that? One of the things I recommend, like with a move like that, first of all, if you're meant to move, you will move. But when you go to a new area, try renting for one year or yeah, two. Yeah, I would agree. You know, if, especially <laughs> with a major move and with today's economy, with houses not selling quickly, is make sure that that is the, the community and the town that you really want to be in or where you feel that is where you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. And then you have some flexibility because if you live there for a full year and you really check it out and you go, things are going well and I really like it and yada yada, then you can go to the next step and say, you know, I'm going to buy something in this, right. in this town. So I, that's how I would go about that. I would do that too. Uh, I'm bringing that up because, again, it's like a life choice that yeah. people make sometimes later in life yeah. and some are very pleased by it and others are, are think they regret that choice right. and some actually come back and come back to the location they left yeah. so I mean this is all about learning and, yeah. and, and that there, there are no mistakes um, so the other thing I want to go yeah. back to that move thing too is is why are you making the move in the first place do you feel that from moving from here to California, that California is where, it's, where you're going to find your joy and happiness, where you're not experiencing your joy and happiness here in Connecticut? So what is the, is, is that the phone ringing? Yes. We have, great, we have a call. Okay. Great. Hello. Yes, is this Comcast, channel yeah. 23? Yes, it is, and thank you for calling in. Oh, yes, hi, this is Cheryl from New Milford. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks. Hi, who am I, who am I speaking with? Uh, I'm Barb. Would you like to speak with Cindy? Do you have a question or comment for her tonight? Uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance. Is the program running live right now on 23? Yes, yes. it is, and you're, you're live on the air. Thank you. Oh, oh geez, I had no idea. <laughs> well, okay, thanks for calling in. And go ahead. Yeah, I haven't seen the beginning of the show. I was just um, traveling. I was just on my way home. Um, I was interested in uh, in Cindy's work as a God-based intuitive, and right. uh, I would love the opportunity to speak with her. Sure, I'm right here, and your name is Cheryl? Yes. Hi, Cheryl. What would you like to ask me? And I'm so happy that you called. Thank you for calling. Oh, hi, Cindy. Um, well, um, my question for you is, um, the lives of my children and myself have been incredibly challenging. Um, most importantly, my children were, and I were nearly killed in a car crash in mm. April of 06 okay. on Interstate 84. Mm -hmm. um, it's nothing short of a miracle that we survived. Mm. Um, I was saved by a voice that day that told me to hit a tree going 65 miles an hour. Oh my. I did exactly oh. as the voice told me. I've always believed that was an angel that was sent uh, to save the lives of my children. The accident shut the highway down for five hours. My older daughter was nearly decapitated. We left um, the scene of the accident, which did kill a woman that day. Oh. I was not responsible for her death. She was dead at the wheel of her car, and she was driving beside me. Oh. It was the, um, the most profound spiritual experience I've ever had, um, nearly watching both of my children die. I did, you know, beg for some guidance, and I was so thoughtfully um, prescribed that advice, which I did follow. Um, my older daughter, as I stated, was nearly decapitated, and then two years ago, I was told the most horrible news that my younger daughter has cancer. Oh. She was diagnosed with leukemia. She endured every horrific side effect to all of the chemotherapy drugs used in the treatment of pediatric leukemia. She's doing very well right now. Um, my, my question is, is, is my life going to get any better? Wow. <laughs> um, the, the reason for those events, um, I've been through financial ruin. 
I've had money, I've lost money, I'm on the verge of divorce, my husband's been out of work for eight months, we're selling our home. Uh, the amount of tragedy in, in my life as a Christian has been oh. so noteworthy oh, and, yeah. and inexplicable, and oh. I just want to know if God has a break in store for me. Yeah. Um, first of all, it's been a total faith walk for you, your experiences as far as what you've been going through. Um, there's also been just a lot of drama, drama, drama in, in your life. Um, is that something that I've attracted? Or um, I get that you need to kind of start working on changing your thought of focus, of what you're focusing on. Um, you definitely have a healer's heart as far as, you know, helping others through healing. Well, um, I, do, I do do that in my work. I'm a speech pathologist. I work with stroke and rehab patients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of kindness and, and gentleness in you. Um, I get that there's going to be some kind of healing ministry that's going to be awaiting you, Cheryl. Um, you've been challenged to the core. Um, uh. You've lost a lot of sleep over this. I mean, wow. But I get that there's light at the end of the tunnel for you. Um, you're going to roll out some books from this experience, these experiences that you have been through. Wow. Wow. Um, I've been so encouraged from my from very, very close friends that have been privy to everything that I've been through really in the past 17 years. And they, after the leukemia diagnosis, they said, it, it's really time for you to write your book. Ah, there you go. Right. Well, that's a reconfirmation. There's no mistake that you did call tonight. We're talking about the show. There is a book in you that you are meant to write. There'll be more than one book that you're supposed to write. Um, begin wow. putting them on tape. Okay. Okay, like just start taping. Okay, um, I do that. I have a tape recorder. I good. Do that. <laughs> good, because that's the way you're going to do it, is by putting in okay. them on tape. Do you recommend it, it be a memoir or, 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 a, or a book of, of, of fiction? Um, I just get to tell you that God will show you the way. So just okay. pray and ask God, you know, God, this is going to be our book. It's going to be a okay. book co-created by you and I. What is the book that you have that's in me that you want me to write and say to people? And you will okay. just see that it will come through. That is what I do with all of my writing, and it works like a charm. Because if you just give the credit and the glory back to God, you take it off of you, and you go, I want to help people. And I want to yeah. serve and share some experiences of what I've gone through to help them with their learning. It will just come mm -hmm. to you. Oh, that, that's, that's really encouraging because at this point, my spirit is so exhausted yeah. that I want there to be some sense to um, explain what I have been through. Um, yeah. And right before I, I hit the tree, I did ask God for guidance. And I was told that I was going to die in that moment with my daughters. And when that voice told me that, you know, it was my daughters that, were, that we were going to die, you know, I really listened. Oh. And he called me by my first and my middle name. Oh. And no one calls me by my middle name yeah. except my father. So yeah. I really, wow. I really listened. And I, and I begged for him to take me and not my girls. I just never imagined oh. that cancer and, and everything else that we had been through would be on, on, on the horizon yeah. as well. I had no family history of cancer. And, um, yeah. Do, can I ask you one last question? What kind of tree was it that you hit? A monstrous, monstrous tree on, on interstate. Do you know the type of tree? I, 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 do, I would say a very large maple. They estimated it to have been over 100 years old, oh they, and they ended up cutting it down. Yeah, I almost, and I almost sense it was an oak tree for some reason. Very, okay. very large. The state trooper actually didn't want the tree to be cut down because when he came upon the accident, um, he said that uh, the tree actually saved our lives because I rolled into the tree and I would have flipped the car on its right side multiple times and I would have landed in a ravine. Okay, well, I would like to go back to the tree and the whole concept yes. of that tree is, you know, an oak tree is a huge tree. It's like one of the hardest woods that God has made in nature and it has tremendous big roots. So, th it did. so think of you like the roots that you're building and growing and the foundation that you're having by remaining in faith 
that something good is going to manifest out of all of this. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I hadn't I hadn't looked at that. I've only gone back to see the stump of it. Um, that remains where where we did hit the tree and where where someone did did die as well. Mm. Uh, I, I'm so uh, touched by your experiences and that you you are so strong yeah. and continue to move forward and and asking for a direction from God and I think well, that, that and, I, and I was told that, that that is why we survived is that my faith I had grown in faith with my family as a young child and that I asked God in that moment for his guidance and had I not had that faith filled existence beforehand thanks to my parents Right. that I, I would have perished, but yeah. I had a rapport with him, and yes. I knew that I could rely on him that day. Yes, yeah, so wonderful just know comment. we don't mean to cut you off, but the time is closing, but know there is a rainbow at the end of that tunnel. Okay, thanks, Cindy, so much. Oh, it's such a pleasure and was such an honor, and thank you so, so much for calling us. Yes, and also, how can anyone reach you, Cindy? Oh, I was going to say, if you'd like to email me, even you, it, it's sacredgrounds at sacredgrounds.bz, so please do email me or keep in touch. B as in boy? Z like zebra. Yeah. Well, listen, Cheryl, take care of yourself, and please thank feel so free much. to call us again. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, that was a wonderful experience, a wonderful phone call. And we just have a minute left. And Cindy, what, uh, finally, uh, a closing, what would you like to say? Uh, I think you've said it all regarding uh, the caller that called in. And, and how can we close tonight with uh, a good thought? Um, don't give up hope. You know, don't, just don't, just know that there is light at the end of that tunnel. There is a rainbow at the end of that tunnel. And, and when you make your choices and your learning experiences, uh, think about it as no mistakes. And just go forward. Take the step. I need to do the same thing. We all do. And thanks for tuning in. Thank Good night. You. Thank you, Cindy. Thank Good night, you. everyone. Thank you. See you next time.